Encryption is the process of scrambling data to protect personal files, secure communication, hide identities, and much, much, much more. In this video, we will learn about the different types of encryptions. We will talk about symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, where are they used, what are they used for, the pros and cons of each one. This is coming up. If you're new to my channel, Welcome, my name is Hussein, and this in this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. Uh, so if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that like button. With that said, let's just jump into the video, guys. So here's what we want to discuss in this video. And I wanted I wanted to make a video about originally about TLS to be honest but in order to talk about that technology we really need to I didn't have any videos to talk about encryption to begin with so here it goes right so this is what we're going to talk about in this video we're going to talk about symmetric encryption let's enable this beautiful pointer so we're going to talk about symmetric encryption we're going to then talk about asymmetric encryption and and I'd like to think that this is just called encryption that's the first thing that people came up with and then this was invented for a reason again guys in software engineering we don't just make up something out of the blue right there is always a reason for making up technology there's a problem and we uh, consult the geniuses to come up with algorithms to solve our problems right symmetric then we're going to discuss symmetric encryption the pros and cons because everything in life have pros and cons, right? Asymmetric encryption, there are pros and cons, what's the advantage and disadvantage? And then we're gonna end up with a summary, guys. Let's jump into it. Encryption or symmetric encryption, or might as well, might as well just call it a classic encryption, right? So encryption, I, will, I have a file, I have some novel that I've wrote, right? I have a book, I have some files let's sit on my computer. I have a PDF. I have I'm serving the web and I don't want anybody to open these things. I want to encrypt them so nobody can access those stuff, right? Enter encryption. So this is exactly like real life, guys. So this think of it like a safe box. Classically, right? You have a safe box, you put your stuff in it, you use a key. You lock your safe, right, with the key, and then you're secured, right? Quote unquote secured. And then what are you gonna do? Even with it, with an actual key, physical key, or just a pin code, if you go to a hotel or something, right? So to open the safe, you're gonna supply the same key. One, two, three, four. Very secure. You open your safe or just use the key. Same thing with the door, right? <laughs> so, so that's the classical since centuries right so here's the same thing exactly use the same key use the same code to encrypt and decrypt that's the word to reverse the encryption so i have my novel here and i want to encrypt it so i'm going to use a key right this key is yellow i'm going to use it encrypt my key i get a bunch of garbage so if someone got hold of this he opened my computer and I saw this garbage and it doesn't mean anything like they can they can do whatever they want with it right because it doesn't mean anything right so I want to read it and edit my novel to I don't know add another chapter I decrypt it how do I decrypt it using the same key right and this think of this key is like a could be a phrase and or a number and then you use that to actually encrypt that and how it works is actually behind the scope of this video right so essentially what it does like it takes a bit and for each letter right we go and mess with that we do some arithmetic operation with every single byte to produce a corresponding thing all right so that's the basic thing you encrypt it you decrypt it you get back your text Simple stuff, right? Here are some examples of uh, the symmetric encryptions, right? And uh, the, this is the most popular one that is very used now nowadays, EAS, Advanced Encryption Standard. And uh, this is the original name of the encryption algorithm when the, the committee that is responsible for encryption told, told the people in 2000, early 2000, says, hey, guys, come up with a very secure encryption algorithm because this thing des so des that's the original encryption 
was brute forced and, and broken, right? So the committee says, okay, come up with an encryption that can be very strong and cannot be broken, right? Nobody can brute force it. So these were the three. There are many others, but there was, this is the winner of that contest, if you will. Uh, yes, and that was, I think this is the second place and this is the third place. I'm not 100% sure though. But these are these were very good encryption algorithm and pretty much these are still used in the wild. This is the most popular though, right? So this is some examples. All right, networking came into the picture, right? Late 70s, early 80s. We need to do like internet came and then it says, okay, hey guys, I, I really need to send messages to other computers not everything is on my phone i don't really need to encrypt stuff on my machine i really need to also encrypt messages to send it to other people right says cool use the same encryption algorithm that we came up with guys what what's wrong with you all right so let's just use it all right so this the difference here is just not everything is not in one machine anymore and you are not the only participant in this, right? That's the difference, and this is the key. So what, what happens is, that, okay, I need to communicate this guy. Alice need to communicate with Bob for some reason. These are the two, only two persons in encryptions these days, Alice and Bob. So Alice need to send a message to Bob, or actually Bob needs to send a message to Alice, but Alice has this key. She invented the key. She knows the thing, right? So what she, what she does is says, okay, Bob wants to send message hello, but in order to do that, he needs to encrypt it, right? To encrypt it, he needs the key. Guess what? The key is with Alice. She says, okay, Alice. All right, let me send the key over. Here you go. Here's the key. Here goes the key. You got it? Okay, got it. So they have both the same key, right? So now this guy takes the key, encrypted, and then takes back the encrypted text and Alice decrypts it using the same key. And voila, Alice got the message. Sounds cool. Why do we need another encryption algorithm then? That's, that seems to work, right? That's, that's great. But there's a problem, guys. There's also a problem, right? And uh, you probably figured it out. And the problem is the first piece, sending that key. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, do you guys like the animation or what? I hope you appreciate the animation here because it took me 30 freaking minutes to figure it out. You know, I'm not a master in PowerPoints, okay? <laughs> so look, look at this, right? I don't know if you can repeat it. Look at that. Ooh, that's fancy. That is skills right there, guys. So here's what, got, what happened, right? So, because I, I know, I guess it's like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna send the key, and since the key itself is a bunch of phrase or text or numbers, it's not encrypted by itself, right? So if you send it over, people can sniff it, and we have talked about how networking actually can be sniffed right if it's unsecured like why unsecured wi-fi or or unsecured communication these network these packets are just there right and everyone can look at them and then try to sniff them right and and we talk about, i'm going to reference the video that we did about this it's actually talking about the osi model in general and how really it's dangerous to connect to a public wi-fi Okay, and, and I talked about uh, that a little bit. But regardless, this guy got the key. Guess what? Any message that the, these two send to each other, this guy, what is it? What is his name again? I don't know. Bob Charlie, I think, because ABC, yeah. Alice, Bob, Charlie. Okay, so Charlie here. Okay. We really need an Arab name. I'm going to call him Aladdin, okay? All right, so Aladdin... Aladdin is a thief, so that, that's very appropriate. So Aladdin here stole the key, and he can just pretty much steal every single message, even if it's encrypted, because he got the same key. He can just decrypt that stuff, right? Pretty coolish stuff. Enter asymmetric encryption. It says, okay, guys, we really need to fix this, right? So what happens is we find a problem. We ask the geniuses. Guys, mathematicians, 
come up with a solution so we want to encrypt with a key but decrypt with another key and it's the solution was there there are three guys that came up with a, with a solution right and it's purely using prime numbers it is way over my head i'm going to reference a video that someone did a very good job explaining about that it's just essentially i i know that it's using pure prime numbers it's just like raising it to the power and doing a mod it's that simple but the actual implementation of how to get to these numbers are are just mind blowing okay but the idea is very simple I have I have uh, I have text to encrypt, right? Use a key, right? This is my text. I want to use a key to encrypt that. And this key, and I I put a color here, red, indicating public. It's called a public key. That means it's okay if it's leaked. It's okay if everybody got this because guess what? You cannot decrypt with this key. You can only encrypt. So you're gonna encrypt me. You get a bunch of garbage, right? And guess what? You cannot use the red key, the public key, to decrypt this at all. You cannot, sir. So what you do is you need a, the, the second pair that actually completes the puzzle, right? And that thing is the blue key or the private key. And then you use it, you apply it, you get the text back. Simple, easy peasy, Japanese easy, right? So these... I'm going to talk about this key a little bit. So the red key and the the blue key or the public key or the private key is actually a bunch of... Uh, they are a pair of primary keys number, primary numbers, right? So this is a, uh, a primary, two primary numbers, and this is pr two primary numbers. To encrypt, you go through every single byte and you raise it to the power of the first one, and you you mod it with the second, uh, with the second number, and then you do you do this again for the other one. So you can see like there are powers, and these numbers are huge, guys. These prime numbers are not seven or eleven or thirteen. These are just in in the billions. Okay, the prime numbers in the billions. So can you imagine the processing that the poor computer that needs to do just to encrypt or even decrypt the message. So the crypt is exactly the same. Just raise it to them to the crypt. You, you take the text, you raise it to the power of that, and you mod it to the second one. Okay, uh, this is just just for the FYI. All right, how are we doing networking now? Sweet. That seems simple. What are we gonna do? Is I generate a public and private key. Everyone has their own public and private key. So instead, if you have a one key, you now have two, right? So now we have public and private. You're going to do that. And then what you're going to do is send the public key to whoever want whomever or whoever. I think it's whom. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this guy gets it. You send this to whomever. Great. They get the key. And now they can send you a text. They're going to send you a hello. They encrypt it. You send you back. And then guess what? You decrypt it with the private key. Let's repeat the animation. Look at that. Isn't that fancy, guys? Uh, by the way, I'm using Google's thingy. Google Drive, Google PowerPoint. It's not called, I think it's called Google Draw or something. Right, so yeah, problem solved. Let's always use this for communication. But remember guys, what I said, this thing is absolutely expensive right because of the sheer amount of computation you need to do that was this was designed just for smaller stuff they told us like those guys those three guys we're gonna, we're gonna come to them now and they told us hey you can use it but fyi you cannot really encrypt a movie with public key right these are the three guys rivest i'm gonna butcher their names i'm sorry rivest shamir and adelman okay these are the three geniuses who came up with this incredible algorithm. Okay, this is one example, RSA. That's the RSA algorithm. It's, it's used It's used in SSH. It's used in a lot of... Uh, uh, it's used in TLS, which we're going to make another video about. Diffie-Hellman is another algorithm. And, and Al-Jamal is an implementation of Diffie-Hellman, I think. Al-Jamal. So, hey, okay. And uh, let's talk about... 
pros and cons, guys. So pros, what is good about the symmetric curve coefficient? And we're gonna we we kind of touched on this, right? Symmetric coefficient is is extremely efficient and fast, right? Because you have the key and you don't really need to think about how to decrypt it because decryption is usually very reversible operation. It's a very simple reversible operation usually, right? So if, uh, there, are, there are a lot of, obviously there is still a computation going on, but it's still fast. I'm going to say faster than asymmetric encryption to be safe, right? It, it is fast though, okay? It is, because it's fast, it's very efficient for large files or large data, okay? If you're going to send a JSON file, better better off uh, use, use symmetric encryption, right? As software engineers, you want to think about that, right? With, with, that's why we make these videos, guys. You, you need to think, we all need to think as a software engineer while building applications, what is the ramification of our decisions of anything really that we make encryption is one of them right if you want to use encryption like hashing we didn't talk about hashing but encryption if you want to use symmetric encryption if you're encryption a large file versus a small file you need to read to choose between that okay so symmetric encryptions like ds like aes these are great for great large files their cons though what's the problem we talked about that Hard to transport shared key. It's very hard to share that shared key. Share that shared key. Yes. So it's very difficult to transport that shared key. It's very hard to transport that shared key to the other uh, party in order to start the communication, right? Because the moment you share it, people can actually see it and just sniff everything. That in itself, we're going to talk about that in, in a minute, but that doesn't prevent us from using symmetric encryption in networking at all. In, in the contrary, we're going to talk about that. And asymmetric encryption, pros, what's good? Public key can be shared. I can send it around. It's okay if some people stole it. It's already there. It's public. People can use it to encrypt. As long as the private key is not, is not shared, right? If, if the private key remains with you, that's okay. And you don't really need to send the private key. People need, don't need to see your private key. Just you need to send them the public key in order for them to encrypt stuff to send it to you. And if you want to send to people, you need to take their public key, encrypt it, and send it to them. They will going to use their private key uh, to decrypt. Designed for small data. That's what it was designed for. These are RSA. I forgot their names already. Those three guys told us, hey, guys. You can use that, but FYI, it's gonna be slow because I'm we're we're doing power and mod on on large prime numbers. It's not only numbers; they're prime numbers, right? They're huge. Okay, I think it's like 2,048 bit numbers. So they're they're so huge. Cons, we talked about that. It's very slow. Right, because doing all these arithmetic operations is extremely slow, but it is it, tolerable for small data. Right, we can we can okay we can encrypt and wait for I don't know 500 millisecond uh, uh, for uh, for uh, to encrypt a bunch of commands. Right, in, in the case of SSH, right, we're sending commands, small commands. Okay, we can tolerate some slowness, but doesn't really work when you're encrypting a huge one meg json and as we said it's inefficient for large data okay and uh, here's here's what we do guys essentially with networking what we do is we use asymmetric encryption to initiate the communication between the two party so in order to transfer in order of transferring messages using asymmetric encryption we transfer the symmetric encryption key using asymmetric encryption and that's how tls works the first thing you https if you want to communicate the first thing it does the server sends you a certificate which is essentially the the public key right and then you tell the server hey i'm going to encrypt something i'm going to send you the the private key Right, I'm gonna no, don't worry. I'm gonna send you the, the essentially the shared key of the symmetric encryption algorithm. 
right? And they start communicating after that. Once the two party have the shared key, the symmetric encryption algorithm, they start communicating using symmetric because it's much more eff efficient than fast. Does that make sense, guys? All right, that's, all, that, that's how actually it works. So we use both asymmetric and symmetric, right? So this is called also public key encryption or crypt crypt cryptography, right? So summary, what did we talk about, guys? We talked about symmetric encryption, right? We talked about how this is one key, you use it to encrypt, and the same key to decrypt, right? Asymmetric, we talked about there is two pairs. It's actually two pairs of pairs, right, of, of primary keys. But essentially, it's a public key and private key. And you encrypt with the public, you decrypt with the private. And it's very simple. It's just like almost like a one-way thing, right? You encrypt with the public, you cannot decrypt with the public, and vice versa. Symmetric encryption, pros and cons. We talked about this. Very, the pros is very fast, very efficient. It's it's a quick compute on the data in line directly, right? The cons is the problem with transferring the key, but we solved it using asymmetric encryption, right? Which is the pros is like I can really send the public key, and I don't really care about that, right? It's it's okay if someone stole the public key because it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, it, it doesn't really matter if someone stole that key and then uh, yeah we saw that it's, it's very efficient for small data like ssh right you can ssh using and it is, it is actually using rsa and the cons is you cannot really use it for large data because it is extremely slow it is extremely slow because of all the primary power and the mod that is going on and the processing that the computer need to do in order to achieve this symmetry public private key asymmetry all right guys hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video give it a like and i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome